at a Santi Kotoko uh, supporter shot by police after the club's 0-1 loss to Brickham Chelsea on Sunday is set to be responding to treatment. Club officials indicate the victim is alive, contrary to claims he lost his life. The fan, whose identity has not yet been disclosed, is receiving treatment at the Comfo Anochi Teaching Hospital. He was transported in a police ambulance vehicle after he was allegedly hit by a stray bullet said to have been fired by a police officer who was trying to disperse funds. Let's uh, uh, hear our reporter, Juliet Bewa, who earlier uh, filed a report and spoke to journalist Osu Bempa, who was at the game. What exactly happened and what informed the behavior of the Kotoko fans? Um, it, was, it, was, it was a country game. Uh, in the first half, there was an incident concerning Comercial Santé Kotoko centre-back, Amtem Da Costa, where he stepped on the foot of striker Kofi Owusu. So, referee Charles Bolu showed him the yellow card in the first half. Then, around 10 minutes to full time, there was an incident with um, youngster Matthew Kujo, who won a free kick right on the edge of the box of Brecum Chelsea. Um, in the bid for Kotoko to get the ball to effect the free kick, there was a tussle between striker Jonas Atukwe and Empim Da Costa again. This time around, Empim Da Costa trying to take the ball off um, Atukwe. Ending up stepping on his foot. So, referee Charles Bulu saw the incident, um, which is assistant and the fourth referee, then confirmed the identification of Anthony Da Costa as the culprit of that incident and showed him the second yellow card, resulting in a match, matching orders of Anthony Da Costa. Now, what happened was that Atuque also had an incident with number 33 shirt Adam, who was a midfielder for Commercial Santé Coro. Okay. So, after the second yellow card, um, we saw Adam rushing to referee Charles Bulu, telling him he was the main culprit and not Anthony Da Costa for why Jonas Atuque was on, 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 on the pitch. And the referee was insisting that, yes, he had his incident with Atuque, but they are really very, very sure that they are showing Anthony Da Costa the second yellow card because of his stepping of the foot of, of um, striker Atuque. So the supporters seeing that guest from Adam trying to say, I am the main copy, so if you want to show you your local, you must give it to me. Um, resulted in throwing the missiles on the page. But I, I must say this, I, I don't want to judge the situation, but if you look at the reaction from some Kotoko management, notably the operations manager for Kotoko, uh, Mr. Donko, who also wanted to have his way on the pitch to try and confront the referee, okay. then I saw the Kotoko PR on Kennedy, watching us also trying to get onto the pitch to have his say on, on the match. I think that was what incited our supporters to think that, yes, probably they will have a point. So they started throwing missiles, water bottles, and all other missiles on the pitch. Then the Kotoko players started begging them, including Kennedy and other Kotoko officials, trying to beg them to stop their behavior. It became a very, very tense okay. um, atmosphere as the commercial virus was to do. What is the very latest in terms of the intervention by the police um, post-match? We have heard about some incidents of gunshots. What can you tell us? Um, what I can tell you was that after our post-match press conference, we the medium and decided to climb down the stairs and, and probably make our way to our various homes. What we saw was an armed car, armored car from um, the police trying to get the referees off the stadium. And there was a lot of supporters still waiting for the referee. What they wanted to do to him, I can't tell. But what happened was that in the process of the police trying to get the referees into the armor car, um, one of the police, I saw him loading his gun with rubber bullets, so straight into the face of one of the supporters. It ended up being very, very bloody. Um, the reports I'm hearing, which I can't independently confirm, yeah. is that the guy couldn't make it on his way to the Confederate Team Hospital. I must say that even for us, when it happened in our face, we knew that it was going to be very, very critical and it would, it would take only miracle for the guy to come back to life. It was very, very bloody. The police came back with reinforcements trying to get one or two personnel of the police force out of the stadium and they came again giving warning shots so that they could make way for them to take other personnel of the police service from the stadium. So if you ask me, in the last 10 minutes, it has been two, three people gathering and talking about it, but it has been very, very bloody a day at the Barbara Sports Stadium.
Right, so Augustine Opari uh, has been identified as a supporter who was allegedly shot by the police in Kumasi after Brekum Chelsea beat Kumasi Asante Kotoko by a long go. Uh, let's now uh, get to speak with security analyst Adam Bona, who's joining us. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Thank you extremely for your time. Hello, sir. If you can hear me, good afternoon and thank you for joining us. Right, I think we're having uh, some technical challenges uh, with Adam Bona, but uh, let's uh, quickly speak with Evan Zinkum right now and uh, so we can continue uh, the conversation to get an update on what's happening. Evans, uh, thank you very much. So uh, we understand that the police has issued a statement. Uh, have you been able to get a copy of this statement and what he says? Well, thank you very much, Stephen. So indeed, the police has issued a statement but interestingly, the police will not admit or, one would say, corroborate what happened during the incident that happened at the Baba Yara Sports Stadium yesterday as to whether they were at sport or otherwise. I'm saying this because, I mean, this particular issue has dominated media discussion today across every media network. Everybody is talking about this particular thing. And the question of as to whether the police acted on professional lines or there were some ethical breaches in regard to crowd control. Well, if you read paragraph two of the police statement, this is what they said. The incident occurred when supporters of Mate Asante Kotok FC went on rampage after the league match against the Kumchos FC at the stadium, damaging some police vehicles and injuring some police officers with stones that were pelted at the police. And the paragraph three further corroborates what um, the, the ask whether they take responsibility or otherwise. And it says, it was during this period that a police officer was alleged to have shot rubber bullets into the crowd, injuring one of the fans in the face. The injured person is currently on admission at the Confanochi Teaching Hospital, receiving treatment and in a stable condition. So, like I said, the police will not, for now, take responsibility of whatever they did. Uh, and, 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 and paragraph four of their statement also says that we are commenced investigation. But what probably, um, will to some extent, for now, we we'll say that some level of uh, justice is the fact that the man in question has been interdicted. But, but again, the police will also not mention the name of this particular police officer. Seven. Right, uh, Evan, so uh, we, you have just told us about the police statement. I want to find out from you whether beyond the fact that the police deflected and refused to accept responsibility for the error which led to the guy being shot, whether there are any aspects of this incident captured in that police statement. So, apart from, like I said earlier, the... Paragraph 2, which gave just a, a snippet of what happened at the Baba Yara Sports Stadium. That is what really uh, occasioned the shooting. I mean, the fact that there were some postman disturbances and a policeman shot into the crowd. Uh, they did not go beyond to give us, uh, one would say, a detailed account of all that happened. Only to say that they have commenced investigation into the matter seven. Thank you very much. Uh, let's quickly get to uh, Skype now and speak with security analyst Adam Bona on the same incident. He's joining us. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much. So I'm curious. Uh, there are many people who are concerned that if police uh, by any means uses uh, live ammunition and weapons to, to tackle crowd, uh, then it begs the question of whether the police really should be carrying firearms. Good afternoon. Uh, the truth is that we don't actually even need a police uh, in, in such crowded areas. If our, our sports administrators know what they are doing, then you don't send police officers to, you know, stadiums, uh, where football games are played. You only see this on, on our continent. Uh, you know, uh, in other places, you use, you rely on stewards. And these stewards are paid for, uh, are paid by the, you know, the teams or the sports administrators or the football administrators. But unfortunately, they, we, we seem to be British by sending, uh, what do you call the police officers into crowded areas and they are wielding semi-automatic weapons. 
sometimes with live ammunition. And so as far as I'm concerned, these are things that our sports have taught the new uh, GFA boss and his team uh, of uh, executives would have streamlined some of these things, uh, taking into consideration where we have come from. So for me, it's a no-no. The police officers are supposed to ensure that uh, terrorists don't get into this stadium. But unfortunately, these police officers are sent in. And also those who even, uh, you know, tend to be violent, you know, as sports uh, fans who tend to be violent, go unpunished. Mm. And while these things happen, chances are that uh, it will be difficult for us to be able to curb this type of violence and shooting of sports, mm. uh, you know, uh, enthusiasts. Mm. Now, uh, you know, you mentioned that uh, the police shouldn't have actually been in the in the in the stadium in the first place but how do we control a crowd like that i mean with stewards and in our part of the country stewards have not been uh seen to command the respect that the supporters would have perhaps giving to police officers anyone who knows a history of the you know football in england will tell you the england the english supporters are one of the most the baddest or one of the most violent supporters in the past in Europe or mainland Europe or maybe probably across the world. But they put in structures where when you are caught, you are sent to court, you are either jailed, some of them, you know, uh, were stopped from, you know, moving out of the country to support their team. Some were severely punished, fined and all that. But unfortunately, in our case, measures have not been put in place. And so long as we don't have adequate measures put in place, then chances are that people will come in wielding, you know, uh, call it uh, weapons. And this day and age, we still allow sachet water to go into these facilities. And so chances are that sachet water could be used as weapons. But the truth is that where are the modern uh, technology uh, deployed to ensure that when you turn violent, you do things that are despicable in wow. these stadiums? After the match is played, they will come look for you. They will get you because there is video, you know, video evidence to get you and nail you. But unfortunately, these things are not there. Right. And so then we tend to rely on police officers, which to me is, is not helpful. All right. Adam Bonner, we're grateful for your time. Thank you very much. Adam Bonner is a security analyst. And you heard his views uh, on the shooting incident at uh, Kumasi, which uh, led to one person injured severely and is currently receiving treatment at the Comfort Anochi Teaching Hospital.